Hey, all you four people out there that are watching this video. Let me just take a sip of my memory juice before we get started. Now, what we're going to cover in this video today is we're going to cover uh, one of the two important concepts that you have to know before you begin understanding the physics of things. All right, the first thing we're going to talk about is trigonometry of right triangles. And then the second thing is, in a video that's going to follow this, is going to be Pythagorean's theorem. Now, what I want to mention before we get into that is I want to tell you something. We're writing a book. We're writing a book. It's more of a help guide. All right. We're writing a help guide uh, for physics. And I'm going to leave a link in the description below and give you access to it totally for free. Now, we're only on the second chapter. It's taking us a little while. Uh, however, we're slowly chipping away at it. Uh, and what I love is, hope, well, what I love is that it helps you. All right. And it's free. And what I'd also appreciate, too, is if you can give us some feedback on it. Leave some comments below in, in the video here and let us know what you think, whether you love it, whether you hate it. Right. If you love it, it'll boost our self-esteem. If you hate it, well, it'll deflate our self-esteem, but it doesn't matter. Does it look like I need a boost with this shirt on? Hmm? So uh, what I do want to say, though, is if you do love it, tell us why. And if you don't love it, also tell us why. Give us some constructive feedback. All right. We appreciate it so very much. Now, let's get into the video. So what we're going to talk about first is we're going to talk about trigonometry. All right. And remember, this is all based off of right triangles. So here's a right triangle. Now, what is a right triangle? Well, it's simply a triangle that one angle has a measure of 90 degrees, right? A right angle. So what we need to know is we need to know the three important formulas of trigonometry here. Sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, the sine of an angle now, all these formulas are in reference to a particular angle inside of that right triangle, right? So let's just say we want to reference this angle right here, and we'll call that theta. So if I'm referencing this angle right here, and I want to talk about the sine of that angle, all the sine of that angle is, it's simply going to be the opposite side of that angle's measure, right? Divided by then the measure of the hypotenuse. That's it. Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. I'm sure you've heard of that before. Cosine, then, is going to be the measure of the adjacent side, or the length of the adjacent side divided, then, by the hypotenuse. And if you want to find the tangent of the angle, right, it's simply the measure of the opposite side, then divided by the measure of the adjacent side. And remember, one more time, that all of these trig functions are relative to a particular angle inside of that right triangle. Now, what happens if that angle moves? Or if we want to reference a different angle, inside of that right triangle. Well, the terms then opposite and adjacent will move along with that angle. Here, watch. Look. See that theta move? And what happened to those terms opposite and adjacent? They kind of switched, right? But what did you notice about the hypotenuse? Didn't go anywhere. The hypotenuse is always across from the right angle, no matter what. All right? So those terms opposite and adjacent are relative to the angle that we're referencing. OK. Also, one other thing I want to mention is don't forget the mnemonic, so KATOA. All right, that mnemonic helps us remember SOH, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, CA, CAH, cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and TOA, TOA, is the tangent is equal to then the opposite over the adjacent side. All right, that's an easy way to kind of remember that. So now, why don't we take a look at then an example? All right, so we have our triangle here. Let's plug in a couple of values. Let's say that that measure, uh, that angle there is going to be 25 degrees. And the measure of the hypotenuse is 8. 8 what? Meters, kilometers, it doesn't matter. 8 units of length. And the first question is, well, what can I figure out? What else can I figure out about the right triangle? It actually turns out we can figure out everything else. We can figure out all the missing sides. There's only two missing sides there, right? And the missing angle. Doesn't matter what we do first. So let's, why don't we take a look at finding the uh, opposite side, all right, of that 25 degree angle. Now, how would we do that? So we have to think about, well, what do we know? We know the measure of that angle, 25 degrees. We also know, so we know theta, right? We also know then the measure of the hypotenuse, the H, okay? And what we want to do is we want to find then the opposite side to that angle of 25 degrees. So we're looking for the O. So you got to look through those three formulas, right? You got to think through those three formulas and then identify which formula has everything known except for the opposite side. It turns out that the sine function does, right? So all we have to do then is plug in those values into the sine function. So it's the sine then of 25 degrees will equal 
the opposite side, which is what we're looking for, divided then by the hypotenuse, which is 8. So notice that formula has only one unknown. We love that because that's how we solve things, right? That's We just do algebra now. Now, one other quick note is the sine of 25 or the cosine of 50 or the tangent of 72, it doesn't matter what the, they're numbers. It's a number. So what you have to do is take that and plug it into your calculator. Type sine 25 and get the value, all right? Make sure, make sure by the way, your calculator is in degree mode, not radian mode. Happened to me once upon a time. Did the whole test. I was taking calculus at the same time. Happened to me one time. And uh, I wound up plugging in all the values as radians. And um, uh, let's just say I didn't do too well on that test. Huh? So don't let that happen to you. Learn from my mistakes. Uh, now that our calculator is in degree mode, so we get that value, we plug it in, easy peasy, right? And then we look at what we have left and how do we solve then for the opposite side? Well, it looks like we just got to do a simple little cross multiplication there, right? So when we cross multiply those values, it turns out that the length of the opposite side is going to be 3.38 units of length, whatever it is, right? Meters, kilometers, it doesn't matter. But that's the measure now of that opposite side. So why don't we now turn our attention to maybe finding the adjacent side? All right, to that angle of 25 degrees. Now, again, we got to go through the same process. We know the angle, we know the hypotenuse. We're looking now for the adjacent side relative to that angle. So we need to find a formula that has the A in it, right, for adjacent, but yet we know all the other parts. So it turns out that we can use then the cosine, right, the cosine function. So the cosine of the angle, 25 degrees, cosine of 25, is going to then equal the adjacent side, which is unknown, so just leave it as A, divided then by the measure of that hypotenuse, which was 8. So simply just plug it on in. Same thing, cosine of 25 is going to be an actual number. Plug it in. All right, so we get that and we realize, oh, hey, look, it's the same exact process, right? Cross multiply, and we can find that answer for the adjacent side. It right? works out to be about 7.25 units of length. So look, we just found now the length of the two missing sides. What's the last piece of information that we can figure out about that right triangle. Well, it's that other angle up there, right? Now, it turns out that there's many ways. I think there's probably about four ways. Well, there might be more, but at least four ways that we're familiar with right now in how to actually solve for that, okay? The easiest way is probably to realize, take a step back and realize that the measure, the sum, I should say, of all of the angles inside of that right triangle is always going to equal 180 degrees. So what does that mean? That means that the 90 degree angle plus the 25 degree angle plus then that missing angle is going to equal 180 degrees. So you can set up a little math equation if you want, right? Boom, there it is. And all we got to do is some simple algebra now, right? So we realize when we do the algebra that that missing angle is going to be 65 degrees. Piece of cake. It also turns out now that we can do a whole bunch of trigonometry to figure that out. If we wanted to use the cosine of that missing angle or the uh, sine of that missing angle or the tangent of that missing angle, we can, and we, we, there's a whole bunch of ways to do that. We're going to end up with the same answer though of 65 degrees. Take a look at the book. I go through all that uh, in the book, all right? So we got that out of the way. Is there anything else? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, I think we covered it all here, all right? So that's what you need to know before you get into physics for uh, trigonometry, okay? These three formulas. All right, I'll give you some practice. Take a look at the book also. There's plenty of practice problems in there as well, and I'm also gonna provide answers to them, solve solutions to them, not on paper, but a video, all right? So it should help you out a lot as well. Um, and thank you very much, all right, for watching, taking the time, all you four people out there. And uh, I look forward to helping you with more problems. We'll see you soon. Don't forget to take a look. Oh, you thought I was done, right? Did you click off? Did you click off? Don't forget to take a look at part two, all right, where we're going to talk about Pythagorean's theorem. Now we're done.